Today we're going to be talking about President John F. Kennedy and his brief term in office. So um, some of these we're actually going to just briefly mention. We're not going to go into depth on, but um, most of these are pretty self-explanatory and the ones that are confusing I will definitely go into um, when we get to the actual notes. So, same as always, two minutes, start writing, and then you can continue to write as I explain. So Kennedy's uh, presidency kicks off with sort of a controversy. It's one of the closest elections we've ever had in the United States. And when we talk about a close election here, we're um, not talking about the overall popular vote, about everybody voting in the United States, even though that was, that was very close. But individual states, it came down to a handful of states in order to get Kennedy the electoral college vote. Um, so that shows it, tells a different story. But like a key state like Illinois, which went to Kennedy, came down to a handful of votes. We're talking about less than a thousand. And <clears throat> so what, when that happens to a presidential candidate, the, nowadays it would be a, a lot of controversy. But back then is that it's not this as a resounding victory as, um, as other, other candidates have had in the past. So the incoming president in a close election has a lot to prove. You have, and typically what that means is there's about, you know, half the country doesn't necessarily want that person in office, so they have to convince a fair amount of that, of that half that doesn't like them that they, they are qualified to be president. The other thing that Kennedy uh, had going for him that a lot, a lot of those people did not like too was that he was the first Catholic president uh, elected to, all, or actually first Catholic president, so uh, elected or otherwise. Um, so that was something that a lot of people were suspicious of him about because, I mean, it's just the way America is. So, um, so when he comes in, he kind of has to come in with a different approach than past presidents. So Kennedy was the youngest president ever elected to office. Um, and I mean, he was still in his 40s, but it was, it, he was still, still the youngest. Um, so he had a completely different demeanor than a lot of the people who had preceded him, who were generally in their late 60s, in their 70s. Um, 
so he kind of was this young, brash politician. So he had a fashionable wife. He had two young kids. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's known for his kids would use the White House as their playground in and out of the Oval Office and throughout the West Wing. Uh, he had, he was a very, he was a high society socialite. Um, think of like Great Gatsby kind of parties type stuff like that. His family came from a lot of wealth in Massachusetts. Like we said, he was young. He had a lot of celebrity friends from like back then, like Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Marilyn Monroe were counted as friends of President Kennedy and seen hanging out with them. But the key thing about how he was a different kind of president was he had his new frontier plan which was something that no other president had ever kind of approached in which they were talking about things that were going on at that specific time. So he uh, at least talked about, eventually got to, but talked about trying to ease tensions on the civil rights issue. He, uh, he needed to, uh, he had plans to modernize the American economy in a post-World War II world. Um, and of course, uh, going into space was a big thing. But one of the first setbacks he has happens with Cuba. Cuba at this time, uh, back in the 50s, had a communist revolution. We're going to get to that a little later in the next chapter. But their leader, Fidel Castro, who was their communist dictator, uh, had taken over the island nation of Cuba, which is just 90 miles off the coast of the United States. So the United States wants to get Castro out of Cuba. So they first try with what's called the Bay of Pigs, in which the United States recruits exiled Cubans from that revolution, train them to go back in and take over the country. Now, this was something that had been in motion before Kennedy was in office, but Kennedy still approves it. But the whole thing just goes uh, haywire. And the, the exiled Cubans are all murdered and the invasion plan falls apart. So Cuba remains communist and Kennedy takes the blame for this uh, mess up uh, through intelligence and the military. And then because Cuba is communist, they're allied with the Soviet Union. Soviet Union starts building missile bases in Cuba. Again, they're really close to the United States, so it's very scary. So Kennedy calls for a blockade of Cuba and not allowing any more missiles in and demands that the Soviet Union take the missiles out of Cuba. Nikita Khrushchev, the premier of the Soviet Union, calls Kennedy out saying if, I, if they attempt to stop any of the Soviet Union ships, they're going to fire on the Americans, essentially setting off a war between the Soviet Union and the United States. However, at the very last second, Khrushchev calls his ships back and they take the missiles out of Cuba. This was a huge win for President Kennedy because he, he did not back down from it and stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Khrushchev and proved himself to be a strong president in the Cold War. All right, two minutes, and then I'll begin explaining as you continue writing. 
Kennedy on the economy was a little bit more forward thinking, and then some of his policies were kind of tried and true. So at the end, towards the end of the 1950s, the economy kind of starts looking like we might be leading into another depression or a slight recession. Um, and that's what Kennedy inherits, and he has to try and stop that because most everybody, the Great Depression is still fresh in their memory, and they don't want to repeat that. So Kennedy does what's called deficit spending, is that even though the United States is not um, making uh, or balancing their budgets, is, is the best way to put that, they're still spending a lot of money on a lot of social programs, um, remember, we have, you know, public schooling is growing at this time, all that. And um, so the main thing is, is with this, he's able to stabilize and prevent any kind of economic depression from happening. Uh, in addition to this, where he was very progressive, is he sponsored legislation that got passed in Congress that's called the Equal Pay Act, which uh, at least in federal um, jobs, and it's recommended in uh, all other professions, that women get the equal pay to men. Now, at the time, that's a very important step. Now, if you pay attention to current events today, there still is a large wage gap between men and women. So it's not entirely enforced, but it was a step in the right direction for trying to get women equal pay in the workplace. And on the federal level, it, it, that does happen. Uh, but with private businesses, they're kind of left to their own to, to do what they wish. Um, now with civil rights, uh, Kennedy gets a lot of credit because a lot of things happen after uh, his assassination, which we're going to get to later on. So he kind of sets the stage for what's going to happen in the mid-60s, from like 64 through 1965, where we have a lot of changes, a lot of action, proactiveness from the federal government. Um, but in Kennedy's presidency, he was slow to react. It was even though it was on his agenda, it wasn't at the top of his agenda. And then he kept having to deal with the Soviet Union and Cuba because we're still in the middle of the Cold War. And there were other issues that we're going to get into, like whether or not to go into Vietnam and so on and so forth. Even though that's not a, a good justification for it, but that's just the reality of his presidency. And so by the end of his presidency in 1963, he, he starts crafting civil rights legislation that's eventually going to become the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Um, the other big piece of his agenda was the space, or what we end up calling the space race. And what that is, is that this was actually something that was created literally in the minds of, the, uh, of Americans, in that in the 1950s, the Soviet Union uh, and the United States were trying to, you know, get into space and they're trying to one-up each other. And the Soviet Union at the very beginning of the space race just dominated the United States. They had the first person in space, they had the first person to orbit the Earth, they had the first satellite in orbit, they had the first woman to go into space. All that before the United States even put one person into space. So. Um, we were, we were being beat pretty badly. So President Kennedy comes in and makes a bold statement by saying by the end of the 1960s, he wants the United States to put a man on the moon. At this point, the best that we had done was put somebody just going around the outside of the earth. It's not that very far. But to the United States credit, they follow up on President Kennedy's ambition, even though he wasn't alive to see it. And in 1969, the United States puts a man on the moon. And at that point, same as when we developed the nuclear bomb, like we are immediately technologically miles ahead of everyone, every other country on planet Earth. Um, and so the big thing with Kennedy is he got, he had a lot of action that 
is looked back as positive. And he had a lot of things that were starting to go or start or beginning in his presidency uh, that unfortunately got cut short. So we, we will never know exactly what, how far he would have gone with civil rights if he had gotten a second term. But while he was campaigning for his second term as president, he's in Dallas, Texas on November 22nd of 63. He's riding in an open top limousine, waving to people in the crowd and an assassin uh, cuts him down with three shots and they were all fatal and he doesn't he doesn't leave dallas alive and then his vice president lyndon johnson is uh, sworn in as president almost immediately and it's going to be johnson that a lot of the things that kennedy started johnson's going to finish in his um, his terms as as president uh, and that's where we're going to leave it today.